Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the new features in Twinmotion 2025.1, including the Environment tab redesign, which offers new capabilities for creators, including presets, new ambiance workflows, and volumetric clouds. In this video, we will take a look at how to use these new features, designed to give creators more artistic control over the environment while keeping the user interface simple and easy to use. So let's get started. First off, let's take a look at the Redesigned Environment tab. You can view this by selecting Ambiance in the Scene Graph. Today, we will be focusing on the design of this new Environment tab. The first thing you will notice is the new Preset option. You can now use and create presets in Twinmotion, which are collections of settings that you can easily switch between. Twinmotion already includes pre-made presets, as seen here with this selection. This makes it easier than ever to set the mood of your project. Creators also have the ability to create their own personal presets. Let's explore how this works. To do so, simply hit the plus button under personal presets. This is taking a snapshot of the settings in the ambiance panel. It automatically generates a thumbnail from the viewport. Creators can edit the thumbnail by moving the viewport and selecting the refresh icon at the top of the thumbnail. Or hitting the menu icon to select capture thumbnail. You can also load a thumbnail if you wanted to use an image that has already been produced. Also in the menu icon, you can rename, delete, or refresh the preset to contain updated ambiance settings. I'll go ahead and rename this here. Creators will see this preset option for the new confetti feature, as well as the volumetric clouds, which we will explore later in this tutorial. One thing to note is that currently, the personal presets are stored locally. At this point, it is not possible to share them easily among the users. So now that we have taken a look at the first new feature of the redesign environment tab, let's keep exploring additional features that give creators freedom to curate their ambiance settings further. Next, you'll see that the Environment tab creates a clear distinction between the two main lighting modes, which are the Dynamic Sky and HDRI. Depending on the lighting mode you select, you can get access to different types of settings. If you select Dynamic Sky mode, you will get access to Sun, Sky, and Cloud settings. When selecting the HDRI mode, you will get access to the HDRI environment and the directional light settings. While some settings are unique to a specific mode, other settings, such as season, wind, fog, and ocean settings, are shared between both modes. Now let's take a moment to dive into this HDRI mode. Within this mode, Creators can fine-tune the environment with a setting that controls how much Twinmotion takes into account the HDRI lighting information. This can be found in the Details panel. Scrolling down to the Directional Light setting, you'll notice that it is automatically set to match HDRI. This automatically aligns Twinmotion's directional light with the metadata from the HDRI. You can always uncheck this for moments when you want to have greater control over the background or any situation in which you want to bend the rules of reality. Let's take a look at how this works. I'll navigate over to this truck here so we can use the reflection to understand how the HDRI and directional light work. First, I'll remove my depth of field so we can get a good look at the reflection. So using the environment tab, and having the directional light and the HDRI matched, you can rotate the HDRI. You'll notice that the shadows are moving with the rotation. I'll go in here a little bit further so we can see exactly what the sun is doing. I'll once again rotate. And here we go, we see a view where we can see the shadows and the sun. When I scroll down to the directional light element here, you can uncheck the match HDRI. This will allow you to control the intensity of the directional light, as well as change the location of the directional light. So here you can see as I'm editing these, 
It's almost as if it's producing two different suns, one from the directional light and one from the HDRI. This is moving you further away from realism, but does give you additional creative control if you wanted to have those two different sources of light, similar to how you might have on set or if you were building out a fantasy world. In the details panel, you can further control this, allowing creators to use the HDRI atmosphere and backgrounds, while also being able to edit the light and shadows as needed. If you don't like the changes you've made, you can always go back and select Match HDRI. In both the HDRI and Dynamic Sky modes, Twinmotion has expanded creator control by splitting the weather sliders under season. This gives creators the ability to have rain with no clouds or snow during autumn. So here I'm imitating a sun shower. Now let's explore some of the features within the Dynamic Sky. We have our time of day, followed by the north offset. This is great for anyone who has a different project north for their scene. Below, we have our appearance, which allows creators to control the intensity, temperature, size, and reflection of the sun. Unchanged is the location setting here, but it's followed by the sky, where we have turbidity. Turbidity is the measure of particles in the sky. Changing this changes the clarity in the sky to simulate occluded lighting due to a significant amount of large particles floating in the atmosphere, such as pollution, dust, or aerosols. The atmosphere density setting further affects the color of the sky by simulating everything from a non-existent atmosphere to a thin or very thick atmosphere, impacting how different wavelengths scatter. For environmental control, the dynamic sky mode has cloud settings that we will take a look at. But first, let's get a good view here so we can get a full grasp of the robustness of the setting. So now that we've got a good view, let's dive into the cloud settings. By default, the clouds are set to 2D. These will be the clouds Twinmotion users are used to with the weather slider in past Twinmotion versions. This is now separate from the rain, which can be found in the Seasons tab, so that you can have greater control over the environment. But let's take a look at the, what these 2D clouds look like. So these are a great resourceful option for anyone who's needing something simple for their clouds. However, creators now have the option to use volumetric clouds, enabling you to incorporate realistic cloud formations into your outdoor projects. These clouds can be animated and cast realistic shadows across the sky. So let's take a look at how this can be done. First off, we once again have access to presets here, if you want to get the sky looking great quickly. But you can also create your own. In this portion of the tutorial, we will curate clouds from scratch. In order to do this, select none in the presets. Now, let's walk through the settings. First, we have a general density of the clouds we can set, followed with a random scene number. Hitting the icon right of the number will randomly generate a scene number. This is a great way of sorting through cloud formations as a starting point and then fine tuning the settings below. You can also type in a number here, making it a little bit easier to go back and forth with testing. From there, we have the ability to control the height of the clouds, followed by the appearance. I'll edit each of the sliders for these appearance settings to showcase the feature, but encourage creators to explore these settings on their own. We have scale, vertical extent, flat bottom, puffiness, density, and additionally, readers can add color. So I'll go ahead and add a slight yellow to the clouds here. And then there's also the option to have cirrus clouds, the wispy clouds formed above from ice crystals. 
The next portion of settings are dedicated to distribution. First, I'll fill the sky with clouds so we can fully see the impact. To better describe this, I'm going to go above the clouds so that we can fully see what's happening. Okay, so I've lowered the height, increased the clouds so that we can get a good look at the clouds from above. Now let's explore these distribution tools. First, we'll take a look at the radial dissipation. The radial dissipation will leave a circular void above in which the intensity and radius can be controlled and then all inverted. This dissipates cloud cover from the center of the scene using a radial shape. So here I can increase the intensity, decrease the radius. Now zoom out a little bit more so you can see the full effect. So now here we can get a good look at the radius. You also have the ability to invert the radius. These dissipation settings are great for storytelling, whether you are utilizing this feature in a video format or simply alluding to storm clouds in the distance or above. The directional dissipation is similar, but using a linear cutoff in which you can see the effect by changing the angle. As you're curating your cloud formations, you may see some artifacts in your viewport. This is because Twinmotion has some optimizations in the viewport so that the clouds do not overly affect the performance of your project. However, they will be exported at full quality with no changes needed from the creator. Now, all of these different settings can be further combined with wind. So this will be in the same distribution setting on the right-hand side. Here, you're able to select affected by wind, which can then be used with the wind setting at the bottom of the ambience panel. Now that we have a little bit of an understanding of how the clouds work, let's take a quick look at how we could combine some of these settings inside of Twinmotion. Say, for storytelling purposes, you want to create storm clouds that are quickly approaching. Let's set up a video to showcase this. Here I've got a nice view with some clouds in the background. I'll go over to the Media tab so I can create a video. Once the Media tab is selected, go to the left-hand side and select the video icon. From here, hit plus so that the viewport becomes the first frame of the video. This is saving the settings from the ambiance panel, including the clouds. If you make any changes to clouds, you can always hit the refresh button at the top of the thumbnail. But now I'm going to keep all of the settings the same for this frame, hit plus to add a new frame. But for this one, I'm going to change the cloud settings. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side. Under distribution, I'm going to change the radial dissipation. I'm going to bring the radius all the way down so that it becomes a cloudy, dark day. I'll go back to the frame thumbnail and hit refresh to make sure it saves those settings. Now Twinmotion will interpolate the changed settings of the clouds between the frames. Let's take a look by hitting the play button in the middle of the screen. Now we've got our storm clouds moving. This wraps up our look at Twinmotion 2025.1's new redesigned environment tab, presets, and volumetric clouds. We can't wait to see how creators utilize these creative settings. Thanks for joining.